Having trouble winning games in Madden 25? Whether you're struggling on offense See ya. or struggling on defense, what the hell is that? The answer may be as simple as something you need to change in your gameplay settings. So if you want to see six gameplay settings you can change to make this game easier, Stick around after the intro. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. This is Mad Money Shot, sniffing out the mad and cheese as always. In today's video, I'm going to give you guys six gameplay settings you can change to make this game easier on offense and defense. But before I do, if you guys want to see more videos like this, please make sure to be a subscriber, hit the like button, let me know in the comment section. And if you need more help or more money plays, you can download any of my ebooks instantly. I already have two out for Madden 25 of the Chiefs offense and Chiefs defense. All you have to do is click the links in the description or the top pinned comment and you can download them instantly. Now, first things first, to access the menu we're gonna make the changes in, we have to just scroll down to settings, hit edit settings, very simple. After that, I reset this entire thing to default. So if you've never been in here, a lot of your settings will look this way. There are certain settings though, they ask you when you set the game, like your favorite team, offensive and defensive playbook, I don't think they asked. I think they, I had to set that. After that though, I'm gonna start off here with uh, coin toss first choice. Now this is preference, but I prefer to kick. I prefer to get the ball in the second half. Uh, everybody's different. Let me know in the comment section what you guys think, if you guys do things differently and how it works for you, uh, because I'm not necessarily saying I'm right about everything. I'm gonna give you guys my opinion, but I'm also gonna do some tests from time to time to test it out in the game to see how it works. After that, uh, you got kicking meter style. I actually kind of like the new multimeter style. And then when it comes to the choice between tap and tap and tap and hold, I think tap and tap is better, but once again, we'll go ahead and we'll do a test to start off to see which one actually works better. So we'll go ahead and we'll start off with the classic Madden meter and the tap and tap, the old style, and see which one I can do better. And then I'm just going to do the good old fashioned kicking uh, drill here just to see how good um, this turns out, just to see if I can get a better score. And in the first game, it seems like they changed the timing or the cadence of the actual moving target. So I didn't hit uh, gold like I was expecting, but I did hit silver. And I'm pretty happy with that for my first time doing this in all of Madden 25. Let's go and let's try the other one out though. So now I'm going to try the new multimeter. I'm not going to try the tap and hold because I know I don't like that from playing college. And you can see how this is actually moving, which is going to make it a little bit more difficult to time. Uh, but let's see if we can get a little bit better. I mean, with the very first one, we hit the target. And as expected, I got a worse score. So I definitely recommend going to the classic Madden meter because I had way more control and I could hold the button and kick the ball when I wanted to kick the ball and all kind of stuff like that. I didn't have to time the back and forth meter, which made it more difficult. Now, when it comes to passing type, they don't have revamp passing in this game, which is kind of a shame based off the fact that, um, you know, that actually is a pretty good uh, upgrade over classic. So in this, you really only have classic placement and placement and accuracy classic really doesn't allow you to do much when it comes to uh you know picking where you want the ball to land so if you're still using this you're not going to be able to make a ton of throws you definitely want to go to either placement or placement and accuracy and placement and accuracy is really the best but it also uh, requires the most effort based on the fact that you really have to time the throw in a meter but placement is probably the the bare minimum i would say that'd be a good starting point and then after that placement and accuracy is if you really want to kick your game up an, uh, another level i would definitely recommend recommend placement and accuracy because this has a lot of benefits when it comes to actual accuracy if you have a bad quarterback if you hit a blue you'll still have an accurate pass regardless of the accuracy of the quarterback i'll go ahead and i'll set up the placement and accuracy to show you guys what i'm talking about and we're going to pick that first and then we'll go back to training we're going to do the pass skeleton out man so i can show you guys what this looks like and then while we're at it we'll see which one i can get a higher score with as you can see here, I hit that blue check mark, and that means that basically it's gonna be an accurate pass every single time. So I have a lot of control when it comes to things like that. As you can see, we hit blue on back to back. So you can see that blue doesn't guarantee accuracy though, so we st still can get an inaccurate pass. And on my first try, I got 10,000 points and silver. So that was placement and accuracy, which I did really well with based off the fact that I hit blue just about every single time. Uh, but if you hit red or if you you know hold the button too long, it can force inaccurate throws. And even though I hit blue most of the time, I didn't always get an accurate throw. I actually had one overthrow. But let's go ahead and switch to placement and see if we can get a higher score. Now, placement is designed to be easier. So let's see what we can do here as we get a very easy play to start and almost scored. This one here, I don't have to worry as much about the actual throw meter itself. As you can see, I'm still not getting great passes. And sure enough, we did get a higher score based on the fact that you have less chance of an inaccurate throw. So like I recommended earlier, if you want an easier passing system, and probably the best passing system when it comes to being able to place the ball where you want, make sure you try placement and I think that'll give you the best results. 
We'll also do one with classic. I'm guessing this will show that this is not the best way to go, but let's go ahead and let's run a test and find out. And you can see here, we don't actually have a passing reticle. You just kind of get the ball where it chooses to go. I don't have the ability to move it around like I do in the other settings. And the results were not very surprising because I easily got my lowest score. So if you're still using classic passing, do yourself a favor, move up to placement, work out the kinks, get used to it because it's not going anywhere and it's a much better way to pass. So pretty definitive, we're gonna stick with placement and accuracy, which is what I'm already on. When it comes to things like the reticle speed, that's really up to you. I just leave it at the default seven, but I know a lot of people like to move it up. Me personally, I think it's fine. I'm used to it. It really doesn't matter. But the ones that are important is the gameplay helpers. This is once again, this is just personal uh, preference. I think it's better to turn the defensive auto flip defensive play call off. But this is really, once again, if you're going to be trying to set up a lot of blitzes and stuff like that, I find that most blitzes work best. If you flip the play, a lot of times it's based off the fact that I want the blitzer coming opposite the running back or the side that the running back is on, which can help out a lot. So to me personally, I do want to have control over this at all times. So I always turn that off. A lot of the stuff I'm going to suggest is based off of control. I want to have as much control as possible. Uh, with the next one though, defensive ball hawk, which is basically user controlled defenders will auto move in the position to make a play uh, when executing the catch mechanic while the ball is in the air. Warning, disabling this mechanic may cause user defenders to attack the ball in the air less aggressively. And based off the fact that disabling that can make your, your defense much less aggressive, I don't think I have to do a test for that. I'm gonna leave that on. Uh, that's set to on on purpose, and I find that's definitely the best way to have it. So we're not gonna do a test on that, but we will do one when it comes to defensive heat seeker assist. I brought this up a lot in college football 25. This is something I definitely think you should have on, but we're gonna go and we're gonna do a test once again. First, we're gonna do a test with it off, then we're gonna do a test with it on. And if you don't know, you can turn this defensive heat seeker window size all the way up to 200%. And this is gonna make it much easier to get tackles. But like I said, let's do an actual test to find out because I'm not 100% sure uh, if it's the same in Madden that it is in college football. We're gonna go, we're gonna do chase and tackle and I definitely don't have the best matchup here with Christian McCaffrey versus Nicobe Dean. But let's see if we can get this done on our own with no assistance from the gameplay helpers. As you can see here, we're starting the game off pretty good. We usually get pretty cheesed as the game goes along. And I definitely feel fast and smooth with no assistance. But I have, I'm gonna have a lot of missed tackles because I don't have any heat seeker assist. So I'm definitely expecting this to be one of the lower scores, but let's find out. And we definitely had a good score, 52,000, we got gold. But now let's turn this defensive heat seeker assist on and let's go ahead and let's turn it all the way up to 200% to see what happens if we can get a higher score or if it's going to cost us as far as control if we're going to get a lower score. Like I said, this is the best way to go in college, but this is not college. So let's see what happens here as we've actually warmed up quite a bit uh, from doing the first one. So I imagine based off of that alone, I probably can get a better look. But you can see right there, we phased through that, uh, that tackle dummy. I mean, that was basically what the Heat Seeker Assist is meant to do. It's meant to pull you into the ball carrier as it did the job there uh, from very far away. And you can see here, I mean, it actually hurt me on that play, but it also helped me from catching the guy from behind. And I definitely got a higher score, which like I said, I did expect. And I could definitely feel it at times where uh, the 200% really created like a magnetism where it really auto-corrected me and pulled me closer to the running back. So this is one that I can't recommend enough. If you're not using this, you should have this on and you should have this on about 200%. There really is no downside in my opinion. Now, this next one here is gonna be really important if you're gonna try to use the new switch stick feature and that's defensive switch assist. This is something that is automatically set to off. And if you read the description, it says, when a user switches players to another defender, user movement will be assisted to prevent them from taking their new player out of the play. We're gonna try this first with it off. I'm gonna try to use the switch stick as much as possible. And then I'm gonna turn it on. I'm gonna try to use the switch stick as much as possible and see which one I have a better game with. Because if you're using, uh, if you're playing Madden or College Football 25, you notice that a lot of times you get, uh, you automatically switch stick, say before the play starts, if you try to guess pass or something, or if you try to, you know, uh, shade up or shade down, you, if your opponent hikes the ball, a lot of times you'll accidentally switch to a cornerback or a safety and have to be that throughout the play. So that might be a scenario where this is gonna be helpful, but let's go ahead and let's try it once again. We'll try it with off first. And we're just gonna do covered skeleton understaffed. So like I said, we're just gonna try our best to use the switch stick on just about every single play. So we got uh, silver on that one. I gotta be honest, the switch stick at times didn't even feel like it was working. I don't know if it was a result of having uh, this on or off. It's really hard to tell. So now we're gonna turn the switch assist on and see if we have a better score or if we notice anything. Because like I said, a lot of times I was trying to use the switch stick on every single play and it just didn't feel like it was always responsive. Sometimes it did, sometimes it's like I didn't even switch players. So I don't know what was going on there. So definitely a tough test here. Got Miami. 
you know what I mean? We get random teams, so I don't really have control over that. But, uh, yeah, I mean, we got an interception on the very first play, even though I don't think that was me. The score is basically the same, and I noticed the same issues where it wasn't really letting me uh, switch as quickly as I wanted. So I really didn't notice the difference is basically the point. So this is one that you could really decide and leave it up to you. I do feel like I was aided by two early interceptions, which got me 3,000 points. And if, it, if that didn't happen, I probably would have had a lower score. So for me, for my money, I'm going to leave this off. I'm going to end the video there. If you guys want to see more tip videos like the best teams to use in Madden 25, I'll have that pop up on screen. So just click links. And until next time, thanks for watching. Man, my shit out.